Today on the table, we're building the Coyote DTC-6, a drop termination closure for splice-only applications. So we're gonna go over the kit contents that come in the box. So we're gonna start by opening the box. Now, because this is a DTC splice only, um, we should get in the box the application procedure, the splice only organizer, the grommets that we requested in the kit. So there should be a total of six with the plugs. Um, for this, we're using flat drop. So we have the flat drop retention clips. We'll also be using round cable. So we have round cable restraints, some silicone lubricant, and then the main closure body. So the main closure does come kind of pre-assembled here. So we have the base on the bottom and we have the cover with the gasket on top. It's all connected hinges. So once we made sure that we have all of our contents here, we're gonna start with the base and kind of get that prepped for our cable. So I'm, I'm gonna move the grommets, cable restraint. All I'm gonna need right now is the base and the organizer and a screwdriver. So I'm gonna open the organizer. When you open this, You'll have this big organizer piece, the screws to attach it to the base, a fiber pick, and you'll also have a yellow splitter block. So if you're gonna use a bare fiber splitter, you can pop one of these single fusion blocks out and put this splitter block in, but we're not gonna use that today. So. When I go to install this organizer into the base, um, what I wanna do is put, uh, it kind of fits like a puzzle. So there's like this cutout here, it's gonna go towards the hinge side of my base. So it kind of only fits one way, just like this. Um, and then once I have that, there are these two screw locations here to secure to the base. So I'm just gonna grab my screws and my screwdriver and make sure that I get this nice and tight. So you just wanna tighten these screws all the way down and your organizer should not wiggle around. That's how you know it's in there. So once we have that, um, we're gonna to have to pick out which ports we wanna bring our feed cable in and then our drop cables. So this is a DTC-6, so there are six grommets ports, um, three on each side. So we've got two up here, we've got one down here two here and one here. So um, there's two ways you can do your feed. You can do it in line. So coming in one side and exiting the opposite side, or you could do a butt application where you're coming in one side and leaving the same side just on the opposite side of the closure. So for today, I'm gonna be installing a 12 count round uh, feed cable, and I'm gonna be using an inline application. So I'm gonna use these two ports down here, so the furthest away from this hinge. Now, when I add my drop, I could do any of these four. So we'll see what happens once I add my feed cable in the bottom where I wanna put my drop. So for right now, we're gonna move this and we're gonna grab our feed cable. So I've got my feed cable here It's around 12 count. What I've done here is I've opened it because I'm doing an inline application. The sheath opening, so from here to here, is going to be 41 inches for an inline application. Now, this is a 12 count cable. It's round. So if I grab my grommets here, I should have the grommet that matches up. 
So if I take my cable measure tape, I'm gonna wrap it around here. I get a diameter of about 0 0.30 inches. So if I look in my grommet kit, I've got two of these round ones, and then I've got four flat drop grommets that looks like this. So because my feed is 0.3, I've already chosen the round grommets with that cable range, so I'm going to use those two. I'll use the flat drops later. So the next step, um, I'm going to go ahead and put on the cable restraint here because it's a round cable, and then we're going to open the cable. So I've got my two kind of cable restraints here. I've got my flat drop clips here. And I've got my round cables. So for the round cables, your cable restraint comes with hose clamps. So I'm gonna grab that kit. Go ahead and open that. So the way these work, I've got two pieces here. I've got a hose clamp and I've got um, a little bracket. Sometimes the bracket gets There we go. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, once we've got our cable kind of prepped a little bit, um, I'm gonna take this little bracket piece and I'm gonna set my cable on top of it. Now, there's two feet on this, the short foot and the long foot. So when I put my cable on this bracket, I'm gonna put it so the short foot is towards where my fiber is gonna be opened. So it's basically gonna sit like this and then I'm gonna attach this cable to the bracket with a hose clamp. So this is a quarter inch nut driver here, so I'm gonna go ahead and open that. And then I'm gonna place the cable on. Now I'm gonna leave a little bit of space here at the sheath opening, just, just in case we have any issues, but we shouldn't. And then I'm gonna tighten this hose clamp. Now this part's a little bit tricky. I usually do it on the table. Just because the hose clamp is kind of small, I'm trying to keep the bracket um, underneath the cable. So once you've got this kind of started, this hose clamp. Once I've got that started, I'll adjust the bracket so it's on the bottom. And I'll kind of hold the two together so the bracket and the cable as I tighten the hose clamp. So I don't want to go too tight here. Um, it doesn't matter that my hose clamp is towards the front of the bracket, just anywhere on that bracket is fine. So just going to go a little bit tighter. Okay, so that's how that should look. And I'm gonna do the same on the opposite side. So I'm gonna open my hose clamp. Put the bracket on, so short foot towards my cable opening. And then I'm gonna tighten this. So the bracket fell out. I'm just gonna slip it back in there and then kind of hold it in place as I get the hose clamp kind of tightened here. While it's still a little bit loose, I'm gonna go ahead and just adjust it slightly. Try to keep the hose clamp in the middle of the bracket. And then just finish tightening. So there we go, cable restraint. So the cable I'm dealing with today is actually a gel filled. So once I've got my brackets on, I'm gonna go ahead and strip off my buffer tube and clean my fibers. So I've got one of those done already, so let me grab that. So here we've got 
our cables with our cable restraint. We've got our hose clamps already on and our fiber is nice and clean here. And because this is an inline express application, none of the fibers are broken. It's just an express loop. So we're going to go ahead and get these ready um, to be put in the closure. So I'm going to bring back in those grommets from the grommet kit, those round ones. And because this is an express, these cables would be somewhere else. They would keep going. Now they're, they're pretty short for this because we're working on the table and not in the field. But in the field, these cables would keep going. So I might not necessarily be able to take this grommet and push it onto my cable. So I'm gonna slit these. So there are slitting instructions in the application procedure that came with the closure. So if you ever forget, but for these DTC six grommets, you're gonna slit them horizontally here. So basically just like this on the side. And the easiest way to do that is you can use a utility knife. Um, I prefer to use snips because the grommets are so small. So what I'll do is I'll take the grommet, I'll take my snips, open them all the way, and I'll put it through the hole all the way so my snips are out the back. Then I'll just snip it. So just stick your snips through there, snip the side of the grommet, just like that. So once I've got them slit, I can go ahead and put them on the cable. Now this cable is, is about mid range for this grommet size. So you will see that it kind of, the grommet doesn't stick together here. That's not an issue. Cause once the cover comes down, it'll make sure that that slit is not going to make any water go into the closure. So now that we have our feed cables already prepared with our grommets cable restraint, we're going to bring the closure over. Now this closure has already been prepped with the organizer or splice tray. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to use the two bottom ports here for my feed cable. So I've got the one on the left is going to be my incoming fibers and the one on the right is going to be my outgoing. One thing that I want to cover before we actually install the cables is right in front of or more inside the closure here. There's a little slot right in front of the grommet port. Now this little slot is where we will put the flat drop retention clips or in this case, this longer leg. So on our cable restraint bracket here, we've got this longer leg. That's where it's going to go. It's going to slide right into that slot when we install this. So before we install this grommet into the closure, we're gonna take a little bit of silicone lubricant that came with my kit. We're gonna put it on the outside surface of this grommet. So one thing to note is because this grommet is slit right here, uh, you don't wanna get this lubricant in the slit. So I usually will pinch the grommet together to kind of close that slit and then I'll put lubricant on the outer surface. So you don't need a lot here. You just want a nice even coating all the way around. And then pinch that together and put lubricant on the surface. So once I've got this grommet lubricated, I might have to shift to the location of this grommet once I put it in. So I'm going to align the cable restraint leg here with the slot first. So it looks like I'm going to have to shift my grommet that way. And then I should be able to just push this. So I pushed the cable restraint bracket into the slot and my grommet kind of fell into place because it was oriented correctly. So I'm going to push this all the way down and my cable's been installed. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm just going to be careful of my fibers here. So I've got my slit here. I'm going to lubricate this grommet. I'm 
and then pinch it together and lubricate not the slit just the grommet itself so once again I'm going to align the bracket here with the slot first and then I'm going to shift my grommet up. So I kind of put the grommet in the port and then my cable restraint bracket should slide right into that slot. Just like that. Then I'm going to push it all the way down. So my express is now installed in the closure. Once we've got our feed cable installed, um, this might be the end of the, the road for the construction crew. So we're gonna go ahead and just store this expressed fiber in the closure until we can add our drops either at a later date or you know in a couple minutes for us. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna store this expressed fiber around the outer channel here. So I'm actually gonna take and start with my fiber and I'm gonna put it back here behind these hinges. Now this just adds a little bit of extra protection and try to keep the feed um, away from the drop fibers. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start looping this around. Now, if you get to a point where you know, maybe your fiber is being a pain and it's trying to go places it shouldn't. Um, the fiber pit comes in handy for this. So if I have a fiber that I'm trying to get out of this, this set of 12 here, like I want the blue one, I can use the fiber pick um, to kind of help me hook the fiber that I want. Uh, the other good thing here is if you're having problems trying to get this to store, like it really won't go all the way to the outside of the channel, I can use this to kind of guide the fibers underneath and into that channel. So once I've got those stored, then I should be good to go. So if this is the only part that your team or your initial construction calls for, then you can close it and, and be ready to go. The only thing is I've got these four ports here that are empty. Now, in the outside plant world, I can't leave those empty because, you know, bugs are gonna get in there, water's gonna get in there, snow, maybe some ice. Um, so we're gonna have to plug these. So I've got the extra grommets from my kit because the kit came with four, or six grommets. So I've got four extra. Now, hopefully these grommets um, were chosen so if I go to add a drop cable later, later that these grommets will be the correct size. So in our case, these are going to be flat drop grommets because that's what we're going to add later to complete this closure. So I've got the four grommets that I'm going to add. I also have these gray plugs. So these are important. So all of the grommets have holes. Um, before I put this grommet in the empty port, I'm going to install a plug. So basically just push it through the grommet. You want to make sure that it kind of comes out both sides. So once I've got all my grommets plugged, um, before I install them into the closure, I'm going to have to lubricate them. So a little bit, kind of cover all four sides, just the outer surface of the grommet. So when you go to install the plugs, you don't want to lubricate them. You also don't want to lubricate any of the cables going into the grommets. So I've got that one lubricated. I'm just going to push it into the closure. I'm just going to repeat this for all of them. Mm -hmm. OK. 
Okay. All right, so now that all of our grommet ports have um, grommets in them with plugs, and I can see that, or cables in, in the feed instance here, um, if I was not gonna add a drop at this point, I would lubricate the outer surface of the cover here. So let's just go ahead and do that. So you wanna make sure that this whole gasket material um, gets a little bit of lubricant. Now you don't need a ton. I usually just try to focus on about three dabs, like one in the middle, one in each corner. And then you wanna make sure that you get the lubricant down on the bottom here towards the hinge and also at the very top. So you kinda of wanna spread it around just to make sure you get all of the gasket material. Okay, so once I've got the cover lubricated, um, I'm just gonna double check to make sure that my all my grommets are lubricated so they all look a little bit shiny here. They've all got plugs in them or cables. And all my fiber is contained within the organizer so then I can close the cover. Now, when you close the cover, there are four bolts on the cover. So these can be done with a three inch can wrench or if you have the screwdriver, um, they can also be done with the screwdriver. So you'll push the cover down and you'll tighten them. So it doesn't matter, screwdriver or can wrench. Just wanna tighten all four. And they'll tell you when to stop. Like you just wanna make sure that they're tight. So that was the feed installation, and maybe that's all your team was doing for the DTC-6. So at this point, maybe this closure has been in the field for a week or two, and now I'm a drop technician coming in to add a drop. So what we're going to do is we're going to open the closure. one okay so open the closure and I'm gonna go ahead and grab my drop so we can take a look at that so when you order these the drop grommets should be configured to the drop cable that you're gonna add either during initial installation or um, you already know the cable diameter for that so I'm going to add a flat drop cable today so I know that these grommets are flat drop grommets. So I've got one already prepared because they are gel filled. So I've gone ahead and um, cleaned my fiber. I've opened my drop cable, so the sheath, I've opened it to the desired length. Um, and then what I've done is I've taken the strength members because they're embedded in the jacket of the flat drop, you can cut them as close to the sheath opening as possible. So I can't get below like a quarter of an inch here. So I've done that. So my strength members are trimmed back. And then my buffer tube here is about half an inch or so. And then I've cleaned my fiber to that point. So to install inside the closure, I'm going to pick one of the four spots here. I'm just going to pick this one on the left. I'm going to pop out this grommet. And let's say that I've already opened my drop cable. Um, I can't exactly slide this grommet on. So I'm gonna pull the plug out and I'm gonna slit this grommet. So similar to the ones we did for the feed, to slit this grommet, 
you're gonna slit it on the horizontal. So just like this. Easiest way to accomplish that is with snips. So you'll take your grommet, your snips, you'll just cut through. So once I've got my grommet slit, I'm gonna put it on the cable. Just like that. Okay, so at this point, uh, I'm gonna make sure that it's good and lubricated. It looks like this side might not have enough. Um, I also wanna make sure that my slit does not get any lubricant in it from cutting. So, okay. So that grommet looks good. My cable's in there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put it in the grommet port. So just push it in. And then I'm gonna grab my flat drop clips, my cable retention clips here. So the kit comes with six. So I've got six in case I'm bringing six flat drops in. I'm only gonna use one because I'm only bringing in one flat drop. So it looks kind of like this. So similar to how we did the brackets on the bottom. So there's that right behind the grommet pocket, there's that slot. So where that slot is, is where I'm gonna push this clip into. So I'm gonna pull my cable out a little bit. So I want like, maybe like quarter of an inch here of sheath inside the closure, just so I have something to grab onto with this clip. So before I push this clip in, I wanna make sure that this flange is towards the inside of the organizer. So once I've got that, you kind of line it up with that slot and then you'll push down. Just like that. So the clip bit into the jacket just a little bit. Now that flat drop is sec secured in the closure. So at this point, what I can do is I can route this drop around. Now there's a lot of open space in here. So I can route this drop however I want to to get to one of the two splices, splice blocks on either side. Um, each block can hold 12 single fusion splices. So I'm just gonna route this today because I don't have time to do the actual splicing. Um, so we're just gonna store the drop. Now, once again, if, if your drop fiber is being a pain here or you're having problems, you can use the fiber pick to kind of help you guide the fiber into the organization here. Okay, so we've got that. So I've got my one count drop in here my 12 count feed. I can splice in either one of these blocks. I can do some reverse routing in the middle here. It really varies on, you've got a lot of room and versatility in this closure to kind of work it how you feel you need to. So once I've got my drop done, let's pretend I put splices in this side or that side, doesn't matter. Um, before I close the closure again, uh, just gonna check to make sure that the Grommets have silicone on them, and each grommet that doesn't have a cable has plugs. So I've got three without cables. I've got plugs in them. Cable restraint looks good. Uh, looks like the fibers are all safe in the organizer, and I'm just gonna check the cover to make sure that it's lubricated. So it looks like it's still lubricated. This might become dry if you're gonna open and close the closure, so it might be handy to keep some lubricant just so you can reapply if needed. And then close it, secure it with the four bolts, just like before.
So once you have that, your Coyote DTC-6 is ready. So once our DTC-6 is done, um, we can mount it at this point. So there are two spots right here on either side of the closure. That's where you attach any of the mounting brackets for aerial applications or um, pole wall mounts. And that completes the build for the Coyote DTC-6 for splice-only applications.